I get to the um, uh, some of the news today, uh, one of which was that for the third time in the history of our uh, nation, articles of impeachment will be introduced uh, on the, uh, uh, you know, in the House. I think the Judiciary Committee will vote on it tomorrow. Here is Adam Schiff and understand the way the Democrats did this. They had the all the all the articles of impeachment must go through the Judiciary Committee, but there were four other uh, committees that were looking into potential that had ongoing investigations into potentially uh, what ultimately could be potentially impeachable offenses. It was the Intelligence Committee that came through first, essentially. The other ones, I think, um, they may have uh, offenses, but uh, Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to do this. She's very, very reluctantly doing this impeachment. I think, you know, uh, when we were talking to uh, uh, Bob Kuttner today, the idea that you would introduce the um, this USMCA on this same exact day is not a coincidence, folks. The idea that you're going to vote on it the day after you vote for articles impeachment is not a coincidence. She, the was pushed into this feels like it's an obligation and is doing it uh, and is trying to bury it as much as possible. Here's Adam Schiff making uh, the announcement as to um, what was the catalyst for these articles of impeachment? What will they consist of? The president's misconduct is as simple and as terrible as this. President Trump solicited a foreign nation, Ukraine, to publicly announce investigations into his opponent and a baseless conspiracy theory promoted by Russia to help his reelection campaign. President Trump abused the power of his office by conditioning two official acts to get Ukraine to help his reelection. The release of hundreds of millions of dollars in military aid that nation desperately needed and a White House meeting with an ally trying to fend off Russian aggression. In so doing, he undermined our national security and jeopardized the integrity of our next election. And he does so still. The evidence of the president's misconduct is overwhelming and uncontested. And how could it not be when the president's own words on July 25th, I would like you to do us a favor, though, lay so bare his intentions, his willingness to sacrifice the national security for his own personal interests. And when the president got caught, he committed his second impeachable act, obstruction of Congress of the very ability to make sure that no one is above the law, not even the president of the United States. The evidence is every bit as strong that President Trump has obstructed Congress fully without precedent and without basis in law. If allowed to stand, it would decimate Congress's ability to conduct oversight of this president or any other in the future leaving this president and those who follow to be free to be as corrupt, malfeasant, or incompetent as they would like with no prospect of discovery or accountability. You know, uh, the sec let's take that second part first. The Congress has been anemic over the past, I don't know, several decades, frankly, um, when it comes to the War Powers Act, when it comes to um, holding the president accountable, um, this is still, this is uh, necessary, but insufficient in my mind. And, but it is the case that, I mean, we have had un, unprecedented obstruction, frankly, not just with these hearings, but across the board. I mean, we forget how incredibly corrupt this administration has been how many uh cabinet secretaries have had to resign in disgrace the failure of the administration to even allow for oversight over the epa the failure of the administration to allow for uh oversight of things like the usda the uh, the uh, the bls i mean all of these things frankly and if you don't address the obstruction in any way, you're just inviting basically future presidents 
to completely ignore a Congress. I mean, I, I think, again, sufficient but unnecessary. I mean, I, I should say necessary but insufficient. Excuse me. Um, and Schiff lays out there, I think, a, a good argument as to uh, the abuse of power as well. It's a little bit more jingoistic than I would like, but um, if I was to do it, I wouldn't do it in front of a, an American flag. I would just do it, you know, in front of a Majority Report logo. So, uh, you know, uh, what are you going to do? I learned the plugging from somewhere, everybody. There you go. Um, here is, let's play these. Uh, we're gonna, we have two more of these uh, clips. Um, this is uh, number six. Uh, Schiff basically saying we can't wait for the courts. Now, I'm skeptical of this. I think this is Nancy Pelosi saying, I gave you impeachment, but we need to get it done now so that people forget that we did this. The fact is, is that you could wait another month or two for the courts. You can get the financial records. John Dean has been tweeting out regularly the idea that you can vote on the articles of impeachment and vote not to send it to the Senate yet and wait. Just start stacking these things up and send them over when you're done with the investigations. So that the articles of impeachment have already been done and you don't need to send it to the, the, to the Senate. This is not what um, Nancy Pelosi wants. Here's Adam Schiff arguing that supposedly they can't wait. I don't know what the, well, let's play this clip. Some would argue, why don't you just wait? Why don't you just wait until you get these witnesses the White House refuses to produce? Why don't you just wait until you get the documents the White House refuses to turn over? And people should understand what that argument really means. It has taken us eight months to get a lower court ruling that Don McGahn has no absolute right to defy Congress. Eight months for one court decision. If it takes us another eight months to get a second court or maybe a Supreme Court decision, people need to understand that is not the end of the process. It comes back to us and we ask questions because he no longer has absolute immunity and then he claims something else, that his answers are privileged and we have to go to back to court for another eight or 16 months. The argument, why don't you just wait, amounts to this. Why don't you just let him cheat in one more election? Why not let him cheat just one more time? Why not let him have foreign help just one more time? That is what that argument amounts to. The president's misconduct goes to the heart of whether we can conduct a free and fair election in 2020. It is bad enough for a candidate to invite foreign interference in our political process but it is far more corrosive for a president to do so and to abuse his power to make it so. Despite everything we have uncovered, the president's misconduct continues to this day, unapologetically and right now. As we saw when he stood on the White House lawn and he was asked, what did you want in that July 25th call? And he said the answer was a simple one. And not just a simple one on July 25th, but a simple one today, and that is he still wants Ukraine to interfere in our election to help his campaign. Now, you know, part of the problem is that the House theoretically could pass a bill that would provide for expedited subpoena, you know, dealing with the subpoenas in, in the courts. Um, the problem is, of course, that the Senate would not uh, pass it, and the, and the president wouldn't pass it. Um, Congress does not have any special. There is, you know, rarely an opportunity, I think, for expedited uh, questions uh, of these type of things. So they'll be pursued. Uh, I tend to think that three or four months wouldn't hurt. You don't necessarily predicate it on getting these other witnesses. You also, again, you do other investigations and, and build on that. <clears throat> but there does need to be some type of statutes, and maybe the House has to pass this first. You get it with the Senate, where uh, there is 
where subpoena power is expedited. Here is uh, Nadler basically chiming in, reinforcing the, the reason for uh, the, these articles of impeachment. Today, elections are the cornerstone of democracy and are foundational to the rule of law. But the integrity of our next election is at risk from a president who has already sought foreign interference in the 2016 and 2020 elections and who consistently puts himself above country. That is why we must act now. I want to turn now to Chairman Schiff, who will explain the evidence. There you go. So those two uh, right there basically presenting uh, and announcing that there is going to be uh, articles of impeachment are going to be introduced to the Judiciary Committee, and then the full uh, House will vote on it next week. 